another month, another video on the Evolution Simulator. Uh, don't know what that is, then I suggest you watch every single video I've made 20 times over, but some of us don't have the time for that. So here's a quick explanation. Look at that, that's a creature. It lives, moves, and can even think with a little AI brain. Now here's the thing, it will die, and to stop that it will need to keep eating food. And then eventually it might even lay an egg or two, so that its children cannot worry about mortality. And over time, as many creatures live and die, they will learn and their bodies will change to best adapt to pellet eating and not dying. Now that recap is done, I'm gonna have to make a, a, a little confession. That recap from a couple seconds ago? I lied. Uh, I know, how could I possibly live with myself after that? But these creatures, they are smart, and have children, and eat. But their bodies, uh, their damn bodies, they don't really change much. Well, okay, okay, they do change, but not really well, as they only change in four ways. Body colour, which doesn't really count, speed, size, and how far they see, which I don't think really counts either. Now, there are two solutions for this issue. I could spend forever creating a billion more different stats, balancing them, and then also probably having to create some fancy custom sprite system for the creatures so they all look different, as it's only size and colour they can actually see changing right now. Or I could do something that's way harder, that barely anyone has done and might not even work, but would make for a much better video. Come on! Why do I keep doing this to myself? Okay, okay, but what is the idea, which is something that I don't hear anyone asking because this is pre-recorded? Well, you know how those creatures got a body? What if I could just add on some limbs and... You know, forget the creature, the, the entire thing will just be custom evolved. So then they now have to learn how to actually swim and move their body. Well, but before I, you know, make that, I need to first completely gut my physics engine and replace it something that's more powerful and useful than a coma patient. The issue with it right now is that when I made it, I made it able to simulate circles and them colliding. And it does that pretty good, but it can only do that. Squares? Nope. Literally anything else in existence? Nope. It, it doesn't even do the circles that well because it can't even handle spinning. Now, the first choice for most people is just to use a library and someone else's code for this because there really isn't a reason to write your own physics code unless you have some really niche purpose. Like, 9 times out of 10, you should just use something pre-made as you will not be able to tell the difference. And most likely, if you can tell the difference between something pre-made and something you wrote, it's probably because the version you made just sucks and doesn't work right. A popular thing to use for your physics is something called Box2D, as it has loads of features and everyone uses it. Like, even Unity uses it. So if it's good enough for, like, one of the biggest game engines around, it's good enough for me. But... I'm a real man, and real men don't use pre-made stuff at all. A real man does everything himself. A real man never acknowledges the even idea of a helping hand. So we ain't using no box 2D. We do this ourselves. So okay, let's begin. Now, step one is to take the evolution simulator. I've spent the better part of a year on just to strip out most of the code. Uh, uh wait, wait, no, why? Well, with what I have planned, it's best to start from a clean slate and build up back after. But don't worry, I can spawn some circles so not everything's gone. Now step two is to build it back up, so let's just start small. A square. And it collides. See, it wasn't that hard. Now let's try and get some rotation in for so uh, some realism. That doesn't look too realistic, maybe if I squint hard enough? N nope. Okay, so what is actually going on? Well, how the physics worked before was really simple, as all it did was move the circles, and if they collided, apply a force, depending on some really simple formula I just made up, and just push them away. But with rotation being added, and the fact that new shapes now exist, everything has just slowly began to break down as it's just too basic and can't handle it. So, then I did a little bit of digging and found a guide that most people use when implementing physics that I probably should have used. Yeah, I'm writing my own physics library, but I'm not writing my own laws of physics, so it's better to copy that part. Well, anyways, let's just see a formula that the guides wants me to use. Oh, come on! And after some coding, it worked. Well, 
you can't really tell that formula was just to get movement physics and not rotational physics. I wonder what the rotational physics formula looks like, and it's more kind of I should have expected that one. And after a bit of work, I got rotation working perfectly. Now the circle looks like that just so I can see if it starts spinning. Okay, that looks fine. Uh, a little bit fast, don't you think? Uh, you aren't stopping, huh? Oh, come on! Okay, so it turns out I'm an idiot. You see this formula here? Now what it outputs is how much more or less the object should spin or move, and that's represented by J, or usually it's called the impulse. Now a lot of this you don't actually need to worry about, except two things, R and V. R is the coordinates of the point where the two objects collide relative to the center of mass, and there are two versions of this for shape A and B, but in the equation there is a sneaky little upside down T, which means that I don't use the offset coordinates of the contact points, but a vector that is perpendicular to that, so I was doing that part wrong, but the part I'm most annoyed at is V, or what I thought was the relative velocity of the two colliding shapes, and like, come on, it says AB there, so I thought, okay, it's the velocity relative between shapes A and B. But no, that's not what it is. Turns out there was this equation somewhere else in the document that said VAB was actually the relative velocity of the contact points, which is like written in P there, and not the overall shape. And I only noticed this now as before the relative velocity of the contact points was the same as the overall shape. But now that things can rotate, that's no longer true. And after I fixed that, it worked like a charm. Just look at that. Uh, me personally, I just find playing around with the physics really fun, so I just find this really addicting. Okay, well, the next thing is getting rectangle collision, as I don't have that yet, it's pretty important, not just gonna have squares and rectangles, just colliding. So, let's just add that, should be easy. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We're gonna use the, the, the pre-made physics library. Uh, remember Box2D? Everyone loves Box2D. Me, personally, I just can't get enough of Box2D and all this boxiness and the whole 2D bit, like, well, did I know they made a whole second dimension? Guess they just love the first one that much. Okay, so, what happened is that I moved on, but everything just didn't work. Collision didn't work, and it turns out there was still something wrong with the physics, so I just went, you know what, why bother with this? Just use the pre-made stuff. And you know what? I probably should have done this from the stars. I should have probably seen if the whole f evolving bodies idea even works before I spend all this time making a physics engine for it. So I'm gonna do the custom physics stuff later on. Uh, though at least this wasn't a huge waste of time because you did watch through that bit and help pad out my watch time. So I thank you personally for that. Well, anyways, look, it's physics, box 2D, whoa. And it's working like physics should work. <sighs> now, to make evolving bodies, it's usually best to have a plan on how you're going to make evolving bodies. And mine is going to be that there's going to be one center root node where everything sort of just comes out of. Because you can essentially just boil down every body shape, just lines branching out of a single point. Now, to get this thing moving, then every joint will be able to rotate 180 degrees and the rotation will be controlled by a neural network. Though letting the body be controlled by a brain is kind of useless if the brain has no clue on what's going on. Like, this is what the brain knows and experiences about the world right now. Just minus my amazing, soothing voice, which is too big of a tragedy for me to handle. So, the brain is told a couple things, like how far up it is, the current limb rotation, limb rotation speed, what limbs are touching the ground. Uh, oh yeah, but I forgot to mention, but I'm going to first try and get the AI to walk and move then. Wait, 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 no, you are just copying Code Bullet right now. Like, he's already done this, like, four years ago. Like, come on, man, this is just sad. Well, uh, you know, imitation is just the highest form of flattery, and... Uh, I wasn't done talking, so kindly be quiet. So, uh, what I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted is that I'm going to first try and get this AI to walk before I get it to swim, because getting that working is going to be a little bit more complicated, so it's going to need to take some literal baby steps. Okay, okay. First, to get walking bodies, you need to get all the boxes connected with some joints. But this isn't enough, as 
This world isn't made for guys that are just forever limp and flaccid and just can't get it up anymore. So these joints need to be able to move, you know. And that's a little bit too fast, uh, made a helicopter by accident. Yeah, okay, that, that's more like it, you yeah, can kind of already move. Uh, it looks a bit like a, like the first fish that evolved into a land creature is now just crawling out of the ocean. Uh, go, Grandpa, go! Oh, wait, no! Okay, now after that, I made a nice and simple creature editor, so you can design a custom one pretty easily. You just start the sim, and then it all breaks apart for fu- Behold, a man! And now this time, starting the sim doesn't make him break apart like a Lego character. But with just one creature, learning is pretty slow as you can only try one new tactic at a time. If you had more than one, then you could every generation try many different tactics and then the best one is chosen to then be explored further. So I improved it a little and let me first put that down a bit as 5000 is way too high. And this should simulate five little guys as a little test. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a lot more than five. Okay, fix that. Everything's ready, so let's get some walkers. That turned out uh, quite well. Uh, they are more jumpers than walkers, but they still clearly evolved to jump pretty far. Uh, they probably only learnt that because I set their lifespan to be pretty short, so it's better to jump really far at the beginning. But you can see that some of them do jump multiple times, which is actually pretty cool. Now for the swimmers. So, okay, the reason why I did walking first is that for swimming to work, you need air, or I guess in this case, water drag, as to swim, you need to actually push against the water, so that Newton's third law kicks in, and the force of you pushing the water then pushes you. Uh, without air drag, you can't swim at all, water drag, I guess. Uh, no matter how hard it flails around, it is not going to go anywhere, it's just going to stay there. Now, what most people do if they want some kind of drag is to just use this really simple formula. Just square the velocity, multiply it with some constant drag value, and that's how much drag that thing experiences. And for most things, like if you want to make a simple platforming game and want to have some terminal velocities with some physics, that's good enough. But in this case, this just won't work. Mainly because the drag is always the same, no matter the size, shape, and rotation, which are the factors that influence drag the most. So then I went on like a little adventure trying to figure out how to compute semi-realistic drag. And what I have to do is figure out how much of the square is facing towards which way it was going. Because if the face is larger, then the drag will also be larger. Uh, yes, you also need drag coefficients, but this is good enough. I don't know where to find a good list of drag coefficients, and I don't want to calculate a fluid sim or... I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid, that's a better way, I don't care. This is good enough. For now. Okay, so the first thing I did was really dumb and overcomplicated as what I did is that I first drew out the squares at different rotations, then I measured how big the visible surface area was at different rotations uh, from above, and then afterwards, after I had enough data, I put all the points into Desmos, and then I found an approximate graph for it. And then after that, I realized that this was only true for squares, and that rectangles follow completely different rules, as one face being larger than the other, just messed with everything. But I then realized it's just way easier to just do trig to figure it out. How did that one slip by me? This is an almost perfect example for using trig. 
So then after I put all the numbers in and crunch them to pieces, and the lads can now swim. This is a really bad example as this might be the worst design for swimming possible, but here's a better design that kind of resembles my tadpole looking creatures from earlier. But right now, in this example, there's a small issue, and that is that the brain has been turned off and the joints are just following a pre-programmed cycle of moving back and forth. So I then later put the AI back in and I also put this on my Discord server just to get some feedback and fix some design problems. And by the way, you should join us by regularly post updates on my projects. And you could also download stuff like my evolution simulator from it, which at this point in the development, I have renamed to Vita Nova. It's like Latin and stuff, you know. It's just a way more brandable name than just Evolution Simulator. Okay, okay, enough delaying. I've hit the 8 minute mark ages ago. Let the time lapse begin! <laughs> Okay, oh wow, okay, that turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So the manual creatures I made earlier with the no brains were able to reach about 80, 90 units in distance, but when I let them learn for only a few generations on how to actually swim correctly, these guys could get to 600 units. Damn. Now with all that done, you may be wondering, okay, okay, so you got some bodies and they can now learn how to swim, okay, that's nice. But what about the evolving bodies part, uh, as that's why I started all this, and the evolving bodies, well, that doesn't happen, the bodies don't evolve, they just learn how to move. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but I clickbaited you and this video is just part one of two on this process. Yeah, yeah, I know, no one likes waiting, but you know, these videos will be way too long if I don't split it up, so subscribe with the bell on so you know when I continue doing this. Actually, no, never mind, I'm not sorry. And I know I said that this is part one of two, but this video is going to be a lot more than that, as this evolving body stuff is just the beginning. As if I get that working, then I can make evolving plants. If I get that working, then my vision system needs to get rework. Then the energy system, and then uh, through a few more hoops, and then hopefully true predation will evolve and be able to sustain itself in the environment. Getting evolving bodies right will mean that so many more opportunities will open up that a majority of AI life projects just can't do, but Vita Nova can. So anyways, like, comment something, join the Discord, and subscribe with the bell button on to make the algorithm like me more, and see you in the next video.